Okay, so we're going to take this kid more apart here and we're going to clean and lube it. Uh, this particular design has these two tanks here on the front. Stick a flathead screwdriver or a knife in and push down on the tangs. There and there. Once you push down, you'll be able to pull this bottom panel out. And you can see there's little keepers here on the bottom. Watch out for spiders. This one here was donated to me um, because it had a, a door switch problem. And I've already uh, made a video on door switches. What happens is if your door switch is bad, you don't hear the click, then your dryer is not going to come on. So this is a Canmore Whirlpool design. They've been using this type of lid switch for uh, many years, I'd say at least 10 years. Once you've got this front panel off, you can take your springs loose. And there's a little disclaimer for you. Here's also the service information for the, uh, it's the high limit ther thermostat uh, instructions, I believe. If your thermal cutoff is burnt on your heat element, if it's burnt out, then you need to replace both the thermal cutout and the high limit thermostat. And so, what I normally do is take these off here. This is like a little quarter inch nut. And you can take these parts off and you can get right to the blower and inspect the the thermostat, the thermal cutout on the blower housing. Rather than taking the whole thing apart, you can just pull this kind of blower housing out and you can run your meter on the uh, the blower cutout, blower thermal cutout. And so basically you need to remove your lint filter to pull that out. And so once you get those screws out, this part here should come right off. And we can see it's not too bad. I'd say it's almost a quarter packed up. And we got a little bit of lint here on the blower wheel. And coinage, we have uh, 19, what? 2005. Anyway, you can see here, you can access the thermal cutout, which is a, now I've got this thing unplugged. I wouldn't stick my fingers in here if I didn't. And I advise the same. If in doubt, consult your local professional. This is the thermal cutout, which normally blows when you have a bla uh, blocked lint system. If your exhaust vent is blocked or kinked, then that will uh, likely blow. And it's a non-resettable fuse, basically. You have to replace that. And so, I would say that most of the dryers I go to repair have a problem with this uh, thermal cutout because they have poor flow. Either the vent is restricted, kinked, and or they have poor flow into the room. We can see there's a little bit of lint up here, not too much. Here, we need and to disconnect so all the screws here in the back. This particular dryer, um, this design dryer, has four rollers. The typical Kenmore only has uh, uh, two rollers. This particular design, they decided they were going to try four rollers. I think they went back to the two rollers and the front skid. So, uh, if you have a large indentation on the back and you have the screws up here, then this is going to be the same uh, instructions for your dryer. And again, they did make another version, which is a two roller version and front skid. And this instruction does not apply to that. So once we've pulled this loose, we can pull it forward. You can see the tang here. Disconnect your door switch. Remove the screws here and here. And then you can pull the front panel out. Okay, so we got the front panel off. And there's this wire here, which is basically a moisture sensor that hooks on right there by that green wire. And that has to be disconnected. Normally it just pulls right off. It has to be disconnected before you take the front panel off. It connects to the moisture sensor here. And we can see these rollers are still good. They're not stiff, but I'm going to put a drop of oil on them anyway. 
You can see this vent is fairly clear here. I can take a brush and brush through it, but it's pretty clear. This one here, I just cleaned out a little bit. And so now we need to take the front drum out. And so basically, once again, the unit is unplugged and adv I advise you to do the same. If in doubt, consult your local professional. And again, we have sharp edges here. And I've been cut many times, let me tell you. So you gotta be careful with these edges. They're not consumer friendly. So basically, we have to reach in between here and disconnect the belt from the idler. So we need to relieve the tension first and you can disconnect it from the motor or the idler. And once you've got it disconnected, you can pull the drum out. So normally I grab a hold of the grab a hold of the belt. And you can just leave the belt in place where it is. Pull the drum out. And if we take a look inside here, we can see there's a little bit of lint built up, not too bad. The gas dryers are a little bit more susceptible to fires, but I haven't seen a gas dryer fire in like 15, 20 years. Anyway, if we check the rollers, we see this idler here is in good shape. It's not stiff, not too sloppy. Check the roller here, that's a good roller there, that's a good roller there. So we can get a little brush or a vacuum, clean this out, and put a couple of drops on moving parts like the idler and the rollers, and we're good to go. Okay, here's a little note about the heat element, basically. Uh, if you run your meter between these two terminals, you should show continuity. These are the terminals for the heat element. This is your high limit thermostat right here, and this is your high limit cutoff. So if either one of these are bad, your uh, dryer is not going to heat. Here is, once again, the thermal cutoff, which is normally related to poor flow. So if you have poor flow, your vent is kinked, now all of a sudden you don't, you don't have any dryer, your dryer doesn't come on or doesn't heat, you might want to check that. Okay, so that's your tip for today. Thanks for watching. If you need any help, I give phone advice for $25. The phone number is 707-443-8347, Pacific Time 9 to 5. And my email is appliancework at yahoo.com.